what's going on welcome back to the channel today is a very special day i am just outside of boston with tony and his beautiful 1969 442 convertible now tony and i have messaged a lot on facebook he's been very helpful whenever i have questions on my cutlass or my 442 because there are a lot of similarities between the two uh, tony is always one of the first people to respond very very helpful and tony tell me a little bit about your car uh, it's a 69 442 convertible. I bought it in 2009 locally in South Boston. Uh, a local guy had it for about 10 years. Bought it from his friend in Quincy. He had it for about 10 years. Uh, before that, I had a slew of owners. And they came from um, O'Connell, Cadillac, Oseville, which I think was in Pepperell or one of the Massachusetts P towns. But uh, I have the window sticker for it. Uh, it has every option, I believe, except for cruise control. And power door locks. Wow. It's got the rally gauges, the speed alert thermometer, power antenna, air conditioning, power windows, four way power bucket seat, tilt wheel, the MFM8 track. It's got air conditioning. I don't know if I said that already. Pretty much everything you could ask for. Uh, I don't know why it didn't have cruise and why it didn't have power locks, but maybe the owner ran out of money. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> and disc brakes also. So I'm sure someone will correct me in the comments, but I think this is the first time that Speed Alert's been mentioned on the channel, at least by name. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about what that is? Yeah, basically it's a knob on the speedometer. You can set it at whatever speed you want, and when you hit that speed, it will buzz and tell you to slow down. So it worked previously. I put it up at 90 because I didn't want it to go off all the time. Last time I tried it, it didn't work. So it was a bad <laughs> connection or the solenoid fail, but it did work. Did you try it at 90? I've had to go up at like 70. I'm not that crazy. <laughs> so as I'm sure people will see by some of the beauty pictures here, uh, this car is not stock. No, it's uh, far from. <laughs> Tell me a little bit about what you've done to it. Uh, let's see. It's, uh, it's... Well, so, so first, uh, I guess tell us about how it is now. How it is now. Now it is a 455, a very mild 455. It has a 204 hour overdrive transmission. It has a 1968 12 bolt Olds 391 31 spline quasi axle. Uh, the frame is from another 69 Cutlass, but it was a hard top, so it wasn't boxed. So I boxed it and gusseted it in, and it's all sandblasted, painted internally, externally. Uh, it has SCNC stage two suspension, which is uh, SPC upper lower tubular control arms. It's got Coney shocks, SPC uh, springs. It has uh, one inch taller front ball joints. It has all two wheeler arms in the rear that have spherical rod ends that are bushings. So it can be a little clanky, but you know, there's, there's no rubber or urethane to give away. Uh, it's got four wheel disc brakes that are from the LS1 type Camaro, 98 to 2002. So the 12 inch disc brakes, the balloon calipers. It's got uh, 17 inch US wheel rims that are 17 by eight in the front, 17 by nine and a half in the rear. It has a two and a half inch Flowmaster exhaust for an A body. It's been modified to fit a little better. Uh, at one point, uh, it had an LS engine in it. You can tune out now, Oldsmobile diehards, if you want to hate <laughs> me. Uh, I have put an Oldsmobile engine back in it, but for a while I had an LS, a turbo six liter LS engine in it. So it's got a Grand National fuel tank, electric fuel pump. Uh, and uh, yeah, I, just, I like it better with the Olds engine. It's just, I'm not looking for ultimate performance anymore. I'd like it to be faster than stock and stop better than stock and ride better than stock. So at one point I put a fiberglass hood on it, save a little bit of weight. Um, yeah, just modifications like that. Transmission cooler, I had an oil cooler on it at one point. Uh, it's got a dual gate shifter, a four speed dual gate that I tried to interface with the stock console. So, you know, I mean, someone like us will know it's not stock, but it looks reasonably stock. Yeah, and so we, this is not, Tony's house. He doesn't live at the local high school. No. Uh, but we took a short ride over here, and we'll take another ride in a little bit. Um, this car rides great for for having somewhat of a sporty suspension, like you said. Uh, I think you said Coney shocks, right? Yeah. And mm -hmm. uh, upgraded sway bars and things like that. It doesn't ride like a race car. It's still got a pretty good feel on the road. Yeah, when it shifts in the third gear, you feel a clunk in the rear, which I think is because it's you know, it's no give in that those tubular control arms. But uh, no, it rides nice. It's it's compliant, it has urethane frame bushings in it too. Uh, so they're not rubber anymore. No, it's, it rides well. And I'm glad that you, uh, I'm glad that you mentioned the 204R. I feel like there is definitely a misconception 
with those transmissions. They were originally in like 80s Monte Carlo SS's and Buick Grand Nationals, um, which were not necessarily light cars and they weren't slow cars. I mean, Grand Nationals were the fastest cars on the road in 1986 and 1987. Yep. I mean, you think about some of the Ferraris and uh, like Jaguars that were out at the time. I mean, they had V12s in them and th this six liter, or sorry, six cylinder American muscle car was dust in them and still able to perform on the highway and just cruise because of that 204R transmission. Um, the people always say you can't make power with them and stuff like that, but 380 foot pounds of torque or whatever it is that they made from the factory, sure, it's not the 500 that a 455 makes, but I mean, that that's no slouch. No, I mean, this transmission is modified, but it's not you know, crazy modified. It has the billet you know, input shaft and the billet drum. But other than that, it's just, you know, better clutches, the wider band has a you know, CK shift kit, it's got the CK servo, the accumulators are blocked, uh, the clutch feeds are enlarged. I mean, nothing crazy. It's, it's nothing anybody, you know, couldn't do in their garage. It's, I mean, realistically, uh, I had a guy build it for me. He was a friend of mine who did a so-so job and a guy I work with and me took it apart and went back through it. So it's, it's not built by a, you know, a performance shop by any means. I mean, with, it's the same transmission I had behind the turbo LS engine, which made, it was only on five pounds of boost, so it made uh, 516 horsepower and 616 foot-pounds of torque. So what stood that should withstand this. <laughs> I drove it with a carbureted LS for a few years, and I just said, you know what? I think it's time to put an old back in it because I liked it in this configuration best. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's, it's a 68, 442, 31's line, 391 Posi. Uh, so it's got the heaviest duty old axle. I mean, it originally had 466s in it when I bought it, but that's, yeah. those are a bit much. So. <laughs> uh, but it cruises on the highway great with the overdrive it's got tons of bottom end torque it's it's a very mild 455 it's 9.6 to 1 it's 30 over it's got cast TRW pistons which I believe are the ones that Bill Trevato shows you in his book I think they're number 3078 okay it's the smallest dish cast piston they made back then for you know, stock classes it's got a very small Urson Viking 100 cam so it's only like 480 480 223 50 it's a small cam just I mean, it's all idle it's got a mile idle Two and a half inch exhaust manifolds, nothing crazy. Performer intake. Yeah. Sparky's carburetor, you know, it's. Good. So I, I call something like that sort of stock plus, where yeah. it's it's not really like a race car, but it's just, it's little upgrades that make the car a little more responsive on the road, a little more power, a little more torque. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's probably not a lot faster than any 70, 71, 442. That's in really good running condition. That's all I wanted. I don't want a race car anymore. I mean, the fiberglass hood I added when I was trying to cut weight out of the car, but. To me, it's, it's like a no harm, no foul. It cuts weight out. It looks completely stock. And I lost like 30 pounds of the car off the nose. What's the harm? Yeah. yeah. Can we take a look under the fiberglass hood there? Sure. Whatever you want to see. You want to crawl around, see my beautifully detailed frame? You know, no. <laughs> well, if we're going for a ride, I don't want to get all dirty on the ground there, but. Now it has these hood locks because I'm petrified of fiberglass hood blowing up my face. So I had a friend of mine make these buckets for me I used the 70 and 72 hood latches but I went back in and I modified the hood to use the original latch I put a little plate on the front and I made a piece on the inside that sandwiches it so it can't possibly rip through the hood so it's it's not going anywhere yeah it's a glass tech hood it fits really well these applied the springs they work great hold it up great it doesn't sag it hit me in the head yeah I don't get any kickback in glass tech they're just nice guys to deal with so I'm happy to showcase their product yeah very nice it's just like I said, it's a 74 block. God knows what crank and rods it is, let's say it's 74. It's got uh, 3078 pistons. It's got G heads. That's just what was on it when I got it. Yeah. The cam was in it when I got it. I just went through it, ring and bearing it. And actually, I didn't build it myself. My friend John Harold did it for me because it was at his house. And, yep. Uh, one of the few engines I haven't built myself. Now, G heads, those are, are those 70... 71. 71. Yeah, it's got the big valves, the stainless steel valves. And like I said, it's a Urson 100. They call it a Viking 100 H cam. It's yeah. Just the matching spring is a good with it. Nothing radical at all. The Sparky's Q jet. Um, it originally had air conditioning. I had to take it out to fit the LS engine turbo downpipe into it. So that's why the original air is gone. But it has vintage air instead. Because yeah. anybody who's ever had a big block A body knows changing the plugs from number six and eight are no picnic. So <laughs> I'm in no hurry to relive that. It's got a hydro boots from a one-ton Chevy van. Um, 
other than that, it's reproduction ram air setup from uh, the parts place. Nothing really crazy in it. And a battery topper, so it looks like the original battery. Oh, that's just a topper. That's yeah. not even like a... I had a repro battery when I first bought it, and it died within a year. So I just bought a topper. It's just like a Napa gold battery under there. <laughs> that's cool. Uh, it's got the original open face all thing that I converted to like 125 amp. Yep. Um, yeah, the car was completely original when I bought it. It was just tired. Really, yeah. really run out and tired. You know, it was running off seven cylinders. The 308 rear end that was in it had a bad pinion bearing. It just <laughs> leaked everywhere. It just it needed a lot of work. Yeah. It was junk. It didn't stop very well. I just set out to go through everything I didn't like about it. So it didn't go that well. It didn't stop that well. It didn't handle very well. It just changed it all. So yeah. I think uh, I made I, it I've never seen this sticker before. That Is, one? That must be, I mean, factory, right? I mean, none of this car, of course, but yes, it's a 68, 69, had that. Yeah, that's a repro one, as is this. This is o, a Q, it's OV, I'm not sure if that's the 400 code. I don't know what that was. I bought it years ago. I, it's just on there now. I, I got you. I've had I got this you. car for a long time. So. Honestly, th this is this is no knock. If you had told me that that was an original sticker, totally would have bought it. It's been there like, probably for nine, ten years. So yeah. Like, this one had fallen off. I just glued it back on this morning. Yeah. Because you can see the outline. I said, you know what? Let me just put it back on. He'll probably say, well, is that original? Because it looks weathered, but it's... Yeah. No, yeah. It's just... I mean, I've had this car, like I said, since 2009. So, it's... We've got some time together. Yeah. Very cool. Thank you. I like it. It's it's, it's a fun car. It handles well. Stops well, uh, stops really well. Yeah. So, now, what got you into Oldsmobiles? Like, were you always an Olds guy? Or were you... You know... Are you sort of like a convert? I had no interest in cars at all until I was, like, 12. My brother bought a 69 442 convertible just like this color wise if he had the, the large hood stripes and he had a black interior and i thought it was the coolest car in the world and naturally you know i'm 12 he's 17 16 he was doing burnouts everywhere with it so i thought it was the most awesome car ever <laughs> so i discovered car magazines and i started looking for old 442 articles and there was zero uh, the closest i came was if you guys remember all you old timers remember that car craft had a 68 442 with a 426 hemi in it and then Porterfield had the 79 with the mid-engine 403. That's it. That's all there was back then. So wow. It was bad. So I set out to, you know, prove that Olds made, you know, great muscle cars too. Which, yeah. again, I'm 13 years old. I didn't know anything. I just read whatever I get my hands on. Red and red and red and red and red. I don't know. I mean, I, I did the same things then I see guys doing today. You know, Olds will be the best car ever. And Chevy put them out of business. And Chevy is like... That's not how it works. I mean, they were good cars. They weren't race cars. They were just really good street cars that you could modify for racing. So, I, mean, I like them. Yeah, that's really cool. I've never heard of that. You said there was a 68 with a 426 Hemi in it? Yeah, I could tell you the article was called, uh, it was like Elephant Engine 442. And they said it was, uh, it was this guy, Mickey Sachs. If, again, if anybody remembers the article, he had a 68 442 with a 426 Hemi in it. it was, Wow. It was very few old articles back then. I'm gonna have to see if I can find a picture online. I, I'm sure there's at least one, but. His name was Mickey Sachs, that was the owner. I remember that too. Okay. Yeah, but very it, was, cool. it was very bleak times. There was no coverage in Oldsville. Yeah. Zero. I mean, you know, the 79 first Olds came out a year later and that was a, you know, a mild sensation, but they weren't fast. They were yeah. Cool. But yeah, it was very bleak times. I mean, until Olds and Action came out in late 83 when Warren Johnson had the first Olds race car. Other than before that, it's, it's nothing about Oldsville. You have to find old timers had them back then and carry the torch but yeah so so let me tell you a, a, a bunch of the things that i like about this car sure. it's got a 455 it makes very reliable power uh it's got a quadrajet which i think is <laughs> kind of unheard of now a lot of guys like hollies a lot of guys oh. like the edelbrock like avs carburetors mm -hmm. um it's got a 204r which everybody hates on and it's just, it's a really clean driver car. Thank you. So speaking of having fun driving it, you want to go for a ride? We'll talk a little more? Absolutely. Perfect. You can do better than that. <laughs> <laughs> I love that it chirps second gear. It should do better than that. I, mean, I, if, I don't know if you do it in your car, but if you get it to the one, two shift that you just jab the gas, it yep. really rip second gear loose. Oh yeah? Oh yeah. I haven't tried that yet. Yeah, I've been playing with it lately. Because I wish it shifted harder, but to me, like, a good shift is when you get whiplash. That's a good shift. Yeah. That's not what normal people want. So. Yeah, when I had, uh, like, I've been cruising mine around, and I feel kind of bad whenever I have my wife in the car, because it is, uh, technically, it's a race transmission. It was built by a performance shop, and they build 
204Rs so guys can go drag racing. Uh, and every shift, no matter what level of throttle you're at, is a, is a punch in the back. Wow, that's nice. The way it, I like them. Yeah, I mean, it, it is nice. It's great to, to, to have that feeling, but mm. when, when you have someone who's not necessarily used to it, they get kind of surprised and then <laughs> sort of herky-jerky sometimes, but. Yeah, yeah, my wife would hate that. I think it's awesome. You gotta make them shift hard enough for me. Yeah. I like them to shift really hard. Uh, so you ever race the car? No, no, no. I raced tons of Oldsmobiles. Never this one. Yeah. I planned to, but never do. I mean, at one point I had an 84 Cutlass that went, uh, I think it went 1057 with a 455 Olds. Nice. Pretty fast. Yeah. But uh, no, I've had tons of racing stuff, but not this one. How many Oldsmobiles have you had throughout your life? Wow. I know I've had like eight or nine four four twos and kind of Starfire ones, you know, little Starfire, the H body one. Uh, yeah. A couple eighty four horse lows, that eighty seven four four two. Uh yeah, probably fifteen, maybe twenty. The parts cars count. <laughs> a couple of parts cars. What, which one was your favorite one? Um that's a great question. Probably my eighty seven four four two because I bought it a year old, four thousand miles. I beat the crap out of that car. I mean, I polarized that thing for five years. It wasn't yeah. fast by any means. As a matter of fact, I put nitrous on it because it was so slow. <laughs> it would run. I got it to run uh, 15.3 with no nitrous. Okay. With nitrous, it went 13.96, 13.97. Nice. <laughs> yeah, it was a 125 shot. Um, and I put her bad sway bars and 16 inch wheels on it. So it handled awesome. Now, 87, is that the year that had the lightning rods? No, I put them in, but it didn't have them. Only, they only came with the first old. Okay. Three and four. 87s, yeah, they have the Superfly headlights, so those one-piece European headlights. Okay. Yeah, they have those. I'll uh, I'll throw a picture up of that if, for anyone who hasn't seen that before. I find a maroon one. Mine was maroon. Okay. Uh, yeah, that was a fun guy. I beat the crap out of that guy. I mean, I pulverized it. And, uh, yeah. Never blew up. Never did anything stupid. It was just a fun car. Was it a 307 in that? Yeah. Yeah. I put headers on it and uh, desmogged it and modified the train. It used to actually trip third gear all the time. It was yeah. nice. That was yeah. great. That was I was only 22 back then. So it was my formative years. Yeah, that was my daily driver. So I couldn't go crazy. I was gonna pull my heads off and use earlier model 307 that has bump the compression. But I just I kept saying you know you gotta drive this car every day. What are you doing? So yeah. That was a very fun car. But uh, yeah, that's probably my favorite one. Believe it or not, it was super slow. But I like I, this one too. I mean, even back then, a 15 second quarter mile sounds. I mean, it it sounds not that quick, but for what you were dealing with back then, I mean, you think about like the Chevy Chevette or like. I mean, it went like 16.4 stock, so I modified it because it went 15.3. Like my friend had a Monty SS and I had that. So he'd run, you know, 16.0, I'd run 16.1, then I'd run 15.9, he'd run 15.7. Yeah. Kept up at each other. Finally, he went 15.29. I couldn't go better than 15.32. It pissed me off, but. Yeah. <laughs> what are you going to do? <laughs> now, there, there's a rule of thumb. Kind of. That's like for every. Uh, is it every tenth of a second you're adding ten horsepower or hundred horsepower or something? Uh, it's yeah. Every ten horsepower is a tenth. Every hundred is a second. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, you think about it. The 307 was probably making 200 horsepower back then. Uh, it was 170 stock, but my calculations it was making like 210 when I was numbering it, which is nothing to write all about. But you know. I get every every one of them to work for me, so they yeah they try really hard. You couldn't be the great master, for sure. Ah! <laughs> Sorry, that was awesome. <laughs> so you you've had a bunch of Oldsmobiles, so I'll, I'll ask you, uh, I guess, two versions of the same question. Okay. So, what's your favorite memory in this car since you've owned it? Because you've owned it for a while. I guess in 2010, I took it to the old Nationals in Sturbridge, Mass. Me and two friends of mine drove out there. That was a fun day. It was the longest trip I've taken it on. Yeah. Did you yeah. did you have the 200 in it back then, or was no. you still? I had the 400 tranny with 323s. I put a 323 Posse in it. Um, yeah, that was a nice trip. It was a good day. It was, you know, I met Lloyd Woodland, and I got an autograph shirt, and I met Tweet. You know, boy, he's, he was there. Uh, nice. Yeah. Yeah, I met a lot of guys. And Tony Bonafide was there, and uh, I'm sure Minori was there somewhere. I didn't see him that day, but yeah, yeah. they were all there. It was, 
it was good. It was good to see a national event. They never really come that close, so it was nice to go there. Yeah, I've wanted to go the last couple of years, and I think a couple of years ago it was like Pennsylvania, Virginia or something, and now it's in, what is it, Ohio, yeah. Indiana, something like that. It doesn't come east very often. That's yeah. why I thought for sure I had to go. Yeah. It was nice. I mean, I got there late morning, and I got parked up by the dumpsters, so oh. <laughs> that was a little embarrassing, but yeah, whatever. <laughs> I was there. <laughs> So now, what's your favorite memory in an Oldsmobile in general? Like, all, all the Olds that you've owned. Uh, I had a 67 442 convertible I restored a long time ago, uh, early 2000s. It was red. It was an original 390 gear, four-speed, you know, close ratio transmission car. It was a, a red convertible, rally gauges, and uh, I restored that. And Cockraft at the time had... You know, send us your burnout pictures. So I sent burnout pictures of Cockraft, and it made it in the Cockraft. It was like the last issue of the year. That's cool. Yeah, it was nice. And I still have pictures of it in my album and stuff. So that was pretty cool, but uh, yeah, I don't know. I, I've had tons of memories. I mean, I don't know if you know who Johnny Williams is. He was a Oldsmobile stock class racer. He used to race during the dragway. I was pretty friendly with him, so we used to you know, hang out the track a lot. Okay. Yeah, I just, I've been in Oldsmobile since... I mean, I started getting into them in 78. I got my license in 81 or 2. I've had them ever since, so I was always messing with them. And did a bunch of racing from about 86 to 90. All right, so that is going to be just about it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. And Tony, thank you very much for taking time. Uh, when I was editing your video, I saw that I didn't record an outro, so made my way back up here to trade you some parts and film this again. Thank you very much for showing me your awesome 442. Sure, absolutely. Happy to be part of your series. If you like this video, please click the like button down below. If you want to keep up with what I'm doing with my cars and see more videos like this, please click subscribe and click the little bell next to subscribe so that we get notified every time I post a new video. Um, and if you know anybody that likes these cars, likes projects, or likes Oldsmobile specifically, please share this video with them. That's all for this time. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.